I packed up my things at the end of 2005 and left my home of Six Nations of the Grand River to go to journalism school in the big city of Toronto. And <clears throat> while I was a big reader of books, magazines, and newspapers, I didn't see stories that reflected those of my life, my friends, or my family anywhere. When I got to journalism school, well, I learned important things like how to identify what a story is and what it goes into putting together a newspaper or a magazine. We didn't talk about representation. We didn't talk about reporting in diverse communities. I wasn't given the tools to handle a story with care and sensitivity. We, we didn't talk about the damages of not having those things. A specific newscast made it clear to me that other journalists didn't have those tools either. It's something that I reflect on often of what not to do. It was a story about the land claim dispute between my community of Six Nations and the neighboring town of Caledonia. It was in an incredibly volatile time and the non-Indigenous media was not helping. This newscast shook me. The reporter boiled it down to an issue between the natives versus the people. So what they were saying is that I'm not a person. The reason this impacted me so much is it encapsulates how I've been depicted my entire life. And this needs to change. It's 16 years later and things aren't vastly better. When Indigenous people aren't in the newsrooms, stories about us often misses the mark. Even the New York Times missed the mark on a recent story about Inuit art. What could have been a celebration of the art turned into trauma porn. The headline, drawn from poverty, art was supposed to save Canada's Inuit. It hasn't. Just imagine how different this would have been if it was done by an Inuk journalist. But it wasn't. And this has repercussions. The media often shapes how we think collectively of an event, issue, or people. In this case, we're talking about an extremely varied group of people that are lumped into three categories. First Nations, Métis, and Inuit. Did you know that there are over 630 First Nations communities, 53 Inuit communities, and over half a million self-identified Métis people in this country? Don't forget, we're also the fastest growing population. So why are we not being properly represented? And why aren't we the ones telling our stories? This is something that I reflect on often, and it encouraged me to get into the media and try to change this. <laughs> when the story is done right, like in Connie Walker's investigative trauma-informed podcasts, there is a richness to the story and a respect to the interview subjects. It enriches these stories. Thanks to the foundational work of journalists like Connie, it has enabled me to get into this space and other Indigenous journalists like myself. The, National, the Native American Journalists Association exists today because of trailblazing journalists like Minnie Two Shoes, while today others have launched their own platforms like Indigenews or their own production companies, like Tanya Talaga's Makwa Creative. I have looked up to these incredible Indigenous journalists ever since I got into journalism, and even more so once I chose to dedicate my career entirely to telling Indigenous stories. I have had the pleasure of interviewing so many incredible and talented Indigenous people, 
and I also had the pleasure of interviewing both Connie Walker and Tanya Talaga. It blew me away that when I went to introduce myself to Tanya Talaga, she stopped me and said, Kelly, we all know each other. She's right. We all do. There is a very small number of indigenous people working in media today. A recent survey done by the Canadian Associations of Journalists on race and media showed that there are only around 175 indigenous people working in Canada's newsrooms today. That's not a lot of people. And I actually know a lot of those journalists. I turn to them when I can't take on a story when an editor comes to me and asks me to take on a story best handled by an Indigenous journalist, I often turn to that short list when I can't take it on myself, which is often. There is an appetite. The demand for our stories is real. The reason that I'm standing on this stage is because in 2017, I left my full-time job to devote my career entirely to telling Indigenous stories, and I went freelance. I also encourage other Indigenous people to get into the media today. I recently held a workshop back in my community of Six Nations, and I tried to give tools to the youth in the community to try to get them into this industry as well. I introduced them to other Indigenous journalists working in this field to pique their interest and show them that their stories are valuable, because they are, and there's not enough of us. I tell these stories to two audiences. The most important are other Indigenous people. I really want them to open up a magazine and see themselves in a place where they wouldn't normally see themselves, let alone in a positive light. But we're in this together. I also tell this story to non-Indigenous people so they get a sampling of stories that they have not been told so far. We are in this together. I want to see more Indigenous people working as editors and journalists across the nation. It would create collaboration. It would create inclusion. There would be stories on Indigenous accomplishments. It would humanize us. I'm asking you to call out stories told without care Let's close this gap. Thank you.